This is something I made quite a few years ago and left in the studio garden when I originally had quite a small space to work in. It's just something to give me the option of being able to work outside. So you're not going to see me build this table from scratch, it's quite old. Um, it was painted with some sort of creosote substitute and after sort of cleaning up a little bit I painted it with aluminium paint just to kind of seal it. Um, when I was bringing it back into the workshop I didn't want to kind of bring anything else in with it. I'm using some offcuts of kitchen worktops which I originally bought from a DOI store because they were damaged for only a couple quid and used to build a soundproofing box for a compressor. I got rid of that compressor and now have these left over so I'm going to use them to um, assemble the table for the CNC machine. Um, I'm actually screwing a batten against the wall because I don't particularly want to build a giant table for this machine. So an option that came to mind was to rest it on a batten. So if anyone's got a table that's not the right size for this machine and they either have the machine or considering getting it, this is a sort of temporary option while you can figure out what you want to do with it. So there it is, with all the stuff on it. So the next thing I'm about to do is replace the machine screws that came with the clamps with something that's a little quicker to put on and take off. I've got these wing knobs which are closed heads and I'm using a tapered hole cutter to drill through the plastic and then screw into the insert another machine screw on the opposite end. This just means it's a lot quicker to kind of clamp stuff down. Though the head is obviously a lot larger and that means it could hit onto the machine. Uh, so you just got to be careful with how you uh, start your cutting jobs. And the nice thing is that they can fit neatly on the edge of the machine. Um, this is a really big machine, a part of me wishes I went for something a little bit smaller. So the next thing I'm about to do is probably the hardest thing you can do on this machine which is milling aluminium. You know, professional machines have something called a rack and pinion uh, which allows the different carriages to move along their axis. The fact that this uses a neoprene rubber belt that's reinforced with probably the bare minimum fiberglass is not a great sign. Um, so I'm just cutting out a shape which I'll reveal in another video what it's for. And it's a simple shape, it's roughly an oval, roughly a square. But you can see the machine is shaking quite a bit as it's going through the uh, stages of cutting the aluminium. You can see one of the locking nuts managed to uh, shake itself loose so you can imagine how much vibration is going through this machine. Eventually I just gave up. I just didn't want to have to go through the whole process of trying to recalibrate and um, correct the machine. However one thing I did notice is that the stepper motors were not set to the appropriate voltage settings and also this was really like this was the thing that kind of indicated it. Um, when I released um, I unscrewed these uh, self-tapping screws on the edge of the maker slide the carriage would kind of move backwards and forwards quite easily. After tightening them fully, the carriage gets caught. 
almost like there's still a little bit of play in the machine maybe the belt is a little bit tight but definitely the voltage to the stepper motors isn't high enough to actually allow it to kind of just push through that resistance so I'm going to show you how you do this, I'm going to show you how you solve this um, what I'm going to do first is unscrew the kind of casing around the uh, G-Shield and I'm adding these heat sinks onto the uh, controller chips just because when you increase the voltage you're also increasing the heat that's produced on this section of the machine's electronics um, testing the movement and then using these little white dials to increase the voltage until it basically moves smoothly you don't want to increase them too much because you can blow the circuitry um, a good indicator is if you can hear your steppers kind of buzzing away that's a good sign to stop the metal eventually was able to cut out but it wasn't accurate um, there was a lot of errors in it it's also quite frustrating not being able to choose where the tabs go to hold the piece in place it's quite an awkward shape so it's difficult to kind of just simply compare it to the SVG file you could see me pointing at the areas that seem to have a bit of problems on them the machine still has a long way to go so I expect you'll be seeing a few more videos like this in the near future